morning, Brewtube. It is the first weekend in the new year, so I'm brewing, and this would then, of course, be my first brew of the new year. Uh, and I was gonna do something, it's finally getting to be winter here, so it's cold and there's the tiniest bit of snow on the ground. So I wanted to do something, I was gonna do a stout, I was gonna do like a big, big stout because I've got a lot of malt left over from, uh, from the beginning of last year, so it's, I don't like to keep malt, I don't like to keep like base malt around that long. Uh, so I wanted to make just a big beer, and then I realized that I am just drowning in hops. Um, the hop freezer is, the hop freezer runneth over. Uh, and I also have some, some hops in there that also are from beginning of last year-ish, so I decided that I'm going to make a really big black IPA. Uh, oh, this is one of the buckets with the, with the malt in it, so it's going to, it's going to use up a lot of that malt and it's going to use up a lot of those hops, so win-win for me. So, uh... Depending on depending on how my efficiency runs, it could be an imperial black IPA, uh, but I don't know. I'm gonna be pretty much maxing out the grandfather uh, for for malt place, so we'll see. That usually brings my efficiency down to like bad. I was gonna say nothing, but that wouldn't make any sense. So, all right, um, yeah, I'll be back when I'm actually mashing in. All right, you still there? Yeah. Time to mash in. Yes, I'm wearing pajama pants. Don't judge me. It's morning. All right. So here we've got, ooh. This is, ooh, four. I think there's, yeah, four kilos of uh, just regular pale ale malt right here. Uh, this is going to be... Pale ale malt I had, for some reason, I had a ton left over. Alright, here's two more kilos of pale ale malt. There's a kilo of uh, wheat in here. We're going with a, a wheat black IPA. And then we've got, I've got some Munich, uh, dark Munich that I had to use up. And then all of the color uh, is actually coming from Carafa 3. So uh, dehusked dark malt from Wireman. Uh, so yeah, it's just there for, it'll, it'll impart maybe a little bit of flavor, but as far as the consensus goes, it's, uh, it's pretty much a, um, it's pretty much just for color, which is pretty much what it is in this, uh, recipe. Put way too much grain in without any kind of stirring. I hope that this... Mash tends to be super thick on the uh, on the grandfather. This might be this might be just too thick. So, uh, let's talk about overfilling um, single uh, single brewing systems such as the grandfather, which has a hard limit of mm, about seven kilograms of malt, seven eight. Um, yeah, and then uh, mislabeling one bucket of base malt as four instead of five. So now I've got, mm, let's say, let's say eight is the absolute maxed out on the grandfather. I've got about nine, nine and a half in there, maybe, maybe a little less than that. But, uh, yeah, I'm an idiot. I, I, um, I mislabeled uh, a bucket because I was trying to get organized and then I deorganized myself, if that makes any sense. So I have way overfilled the capacity of the grandfather. And one thing you'll notice is, is that in trying to incorporate all of that grain 
uh, into the mash, I knocked the um, I knocked the return pipe loose inside. So totally, there's no return pipe here. It's all returning back down through the through the holes here, which is not good. This is not going to be. Yeah, this is not great. This is not a good way to do uh, grain father. You can also see that there's just tons of uh, grain that's probably made it down into the the actual beer part. So I'll probably have to go through it with a sieve or something. Um, yeah, so this beer is going to be an exercise in uh, damage control. I uh, yeah, more on that later, I guess. So, I uh, wasn't lying when I said I had a lot of hops in the hop freezer. Uh, yeah, that's the entire, like, ice tray thing completely full. Ooh, man, man. Cool. Um, yeah, so, I'm actually, this is what I'm feeling over here. Um, these are both Equinox. I think that that could be cool to try in a black IPA. So that's over 200 grams of Equinox right there. Uh, I've got some 2014 Centennial, wouldn't mind using those up. A random bag of Pearl that I think I'll just throw in for the hell of it. And then I've got this open bag of just a tiny bit of Summit that has been sitting around for a year now, so it's probably pretty used up a lot of its alpha, so I think I'll probably just throw that in as the as the bittering charge at the beginning. That'll that'll eat up a little section of these hops. So that is that is what I think I'm going. Equinox, Equinox Centennial, Black IPA. Alright, into the brew day. I am running off the uh Running off the beer into the Chronicle. You can see I uh, got some upgrades to it for, for Christmas. That's the racking, not racking cane, the blow off cane, and then the leg extender. So it's actually workably tall now. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and do a video about those. The, one of the reasons I wanted to make a beer for the the Chronicle was so I could do some some like reviews. Sorry about the laundry back there. Um, to do some reviews on those. So, yeah, not much, not much more to show. Uh, yeah, ended up with a lot of Equinox in here. Um, it's a pretty big beer. It was 10.69 pre-boil. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll shoot a little, one last little video once I pull a, once I pull a sample off and see what my original gravity was.